Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated, where today I'm just thrilled to death to be joined by actor Ken Lerner. Uh, welcome, Ken. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming on. This is a, it's a big day for me. Sure, 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 sure. It's fun. I've been a, uh, been a fan since you were uh, bong bonging your way through Happy Days. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my first job. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought this town was the easiest town in the world. I had my first audition, got the job, and then uh, they brought me back about six, seven, eight times. I played three or four different characters. It's an amazing, because yeah. in the old days, you could play different characters. Now you don't anymore. Yeah, I've noticed that. Uh, uh, used to be, you might see someone show up over the course of a, a series several times, but each time they'd be playing, you know, a different role. But yeah, you don't yeah. really see that anymore. No, I did that on NYPD Blue. I did it on Happy Days. I did it on ER. I did it on lots of different shows. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Just that's, come back with a different name. Yeah. <laughs> Same face, different name. That's probably pretty nice. Keeps oh, you busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great. <laughs> great i went from playing i think i was frankie big bing bong to rocco malachi with the malachi brothers yeah that was the big one yeah yeah that's that's a that's a pretty good show to to get your start on it's such a good cast and of course Absolutely. yeah most yeah. of that cast went on to bigger and better things that's that's mm -hmm. not bad mm -hmm. not bad yeah. you you stay in the uh, touch with any of them from the happy days cast uh, i see ron howard every now and then uh i worked with him on a movie and um run into him at some parties and marion ross i run into yeah uh, yeah yeah that's yeah. uh that's pretty good and then i was trying to think what the um what was the other one of course i the one i want to talk to you about is is buffy because that's mm -hmm. uh i promised brett that <laughs> that I'd I'd ask you about uh, playing the principal on Buffy because he's such a, a huge fan. Yeah, but I think principal the, Flutie. Yeah, Principal Flutie, and it uh, that's such a great show. And your role in it was was so funny because you got to really um, interact with her right at the beginning. So that was mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that first was good. episodes. Yeah, you never know how a show is going to go, but on that one, right at, right from the start, I knew it was going to be a good show. And then um, you know. Uh, they came and told me that they're going to have multiple principles and eventually I was going to be killed and I was by hyena kids which was, yeah. which was great they <laughs> jumped across the desk I had big marks on my face oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they were good people to work with that was, um, that was the beginning of um, what's his name's uh, career who did the Avengers the uh, director oh uh, Joss Whedon yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah pretty, had you seen the movie but before you did the show? Yeah. No, but I mean, it really was so much different than the original. It was. You know? yeah. yeah, it was. And the funny thing was, the director was an actor I had worked with on L.A. Law, Charlie Martin Smith. Really? Who you probably have heard of, yeah. He I have, yeah. Character. Yeah, so he was the director of the episode, and... Um, and that was fun. And they let me do what I wanted. You know, I, I had fun. I ripped up her report card, I remember. And then I pasted it together. And, I, you know, good scenes with Sarah Michelle. And, yeah. You know, good people. Well, that was kind of her start, too. That really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her the show was a huge hit. I mean, it just, you know, who knew? You just never know when you go into those things. Yeah. Like I did, um, I did uh, ER and Chicago Hope both at the same like a week later and both of them hadn't been on the air yet so er was wondering what chicago hope was like chicago hope was wondering what er was yeah. like and er turned out to be the bigger hit than chicago hope but I, you know i did a lot of those so you know i remember when when those were coming out and they you know i, I remember wondering you know which one am i going to put my time into mm -hmm. yeah. because they were kind of similar shows coming out and they were both good shows uh, oh absolutely yeah, are ended up really, one. each one was wondering whether the one was going to be the better show and you know in doing it i couldn't tell i mean i thought 
uh, boats were equally good. Um, but, you know, I mean, ER went on to, you know, George Clooney and all those people. Yeah. Well, you know, interest in Chicago Hope was great as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's back when network TV was kind of king. You know, we didn't have all this uh, streaming services and all the cable channels. And, you know, yeah. now there's, it, it, from from what I hear, there's there's a lot more opportunity, but it's almost harder to uh, uh, to break into it. Well, you know, I mean, I, if I was starting out, I would be delirious in terms of how many different opportunities I would have. But as an established actor, you know, doing a lot of television and uh, a lot of movies, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I like this show. I don't like this one. I'll turn down this one, that kind of thing. You know, you kind of get to pick and choose because some of them aren't that great. You know? Yeah, but that's right. That's right. Yeah, they're not all gems. That's yeah, true. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, th I think what I love about uh, you've always been one of my favorite actors. And I think it's because you. you're so recognizable anytime, even in just parts where you just show up for just a, a you know, a minute or two, you know, it, instantly know who you are. And if I'm, if I'm not watching, I hear your voice. I can, I know exactly who it is. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm I can't tell you the amount of people that tell me they know me and they don't know my name. They don't know from where. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and then I have people fighting me saying, no, no, you run that liquor store. No, you were the teacher <laughs> that my son went, you know, and I said, no, 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 I'm an actor. No, no, you're not. You, you, you know, and it's like you always have to kind of explain. When I go to Vegas in the old days, uh, get recognized a lot because you have people from all over the country. Yeah. And that happened many, many, many times. People knowing, you know, hey, I know you. Where? <laughs> you know, That's and, right. They're like, oh, yeah. well, because you've yeah. been in so much. You know, I, yeah. I, I love the, uh, the early, I, well, it wasn't too early, but you did the the running man where you get stabbed with the pen from Arnold. Yeah, yeah. I really and, was, on that one, I was really concerned that the wood was thick enough that Arnold wouldn't go through it with his pen because they, you know, they gave me this kind of uh, wood plate that went under my shirt yeah. and on my back. And then they said, Arnold will just stick it in. And, uh, you know, and so we didn't rehearse it. We just started, you know, we didn't rehearse the actual pen thing. And then he put it. And when I turned around and I was scared, it was real life scared. <laughs> you know? I mean, you got Arnold like doing it, boom, like that. So no acting involved in that one. No, no, that's that's one I think even I could do. That, uh, I could probably be terrified with uh, Arnold Absolutely. stabbing me. With well, you know, pen. another one was when I did Happy Days, when we did the Malachi Crunch, when there was a demolition derby. So oh, right. What told me was, okay, so Ken, you're the only actor and all the other cars are going to be stunt people. So you put stunt people in a car and you have an actor driving as well. Stunt people are like so happy to switch into an actor so i'm and i was driving for my life i was trying to avoid people and they were smashing me it was it was terrifying Let me tell you. very that true pretty good i it's it's funny you've been on so many things and, and I, I was talking with the uh, the kids to tell them who i was talking to today and of course brett knew you from from buffy mm -hmm. um uh, my stepson he knew you from just that brief role you had on uh, big bang theory where you're oh, yeah. out the window that's right was... the dentist i came out of the window yeah interesting <laughs> thing about that the woman that played the, the my love interest the, the, yeah. she never was on screen no she was the heavy never set. was yeah right. never howard's learned, mom never learned her lines because she was never on screen so she always had the script with her so was the kind of cushiest job you could possibly have on television. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, very sweet woman. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that, that was a funny scene, though. And oh, thank you. you sneaking out the yeah, window. and it's funny, uh, Jim Parsons, I had met, I had met Jim Parsons. He played my son in a FedEx commercial back in New York, and it was one of his first jobs. So, really? Yeah, so I reminded him, and he looked at me, and he went, oh, my God. You were my dad. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I gave him advice because he showed up late to the set. And I said, come here, son. You cannot do that. You have to be professional. And then he turns out to star yes. on this, you know, big yeah, Emmy you, award winning. 
you may have set him up for success. Exactly. I like that. I think you can take credit. You, he's probably, you're probably you. the reason he's successful. I will, I will take credit next time I see him. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so my oldest, my daughter, she said, I was telling her stuff you've been in. She's like, no, 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 no. And then I, uh, then she said, wait a minute. She said, wasn't he the allergy guy on Friends? I was like, that was him. Oh, that was him. Funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. A great story with that. My daughter was, um, she was in junior high school and she was starring in Little Shop of Horrors. She had one performance. So when my agent said to go up on this part, I said, well, it shoots the same night as my daughter starring in the play. And I said, I don't think, I, I, you know, and they said, well, just go. So I went and it was one of those jobs that if you got it, you started work immediately. So five of us, six of us auditioning, I got the part. And then uh, when I went back into the room, so they said, you know, we shoot on Friday. And I said, yeah, now my agents talked to you about it. And they said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I can't shoot at that time because I am going to see my daughter in a play. And they said, well, we can't work that out. I said, well, then I'm gonna have to turn it down. So I walked out, walked to the parking lot. They came running in me and they said we'll change our shooting schedule so oh, that wow. you can do it and you can, isn't that great that so is great. they changed the order of the show so i could shoot and get out and see my daughter starring in the play and oh, i never let my daughter pick that. <laughs> <laughs> no you gotta hold that over <laughs> oh it's a you know i mean i would have turned down all of that you know going on friends and i'll tell you something friends was the closest thing i've ever done to the craziness that was happening on Happy, because they shoot in front of a live audience. Yeah. So the Happy Days audience and the Friends audience were the same craziness and exuberance and how unbelievable people were fanatical about those shows. Same thing with Friends and Happy Days. Never saw oh, it before. Yeah. Bang was fine, but Friends was just through the roof. Yeah. And I do get, I do get recognized from Friends a lot. Yeah. Well, she said, she said, Dad, we come from a family that has, you know, a ton of food allergies. How oh, can right. you not remember the, uh, <laughs> the fruit Yeah, that was, I'm allergic to nuts and almonds and walnuts and <laughs> shellfish. So I tell people I make a lot of money just by having a bland character. Yeah. And they, they love it. Yeah. We that always joke. We always joke that, you know, we're, we're not the family you want to come or invite to dinner. Uh, you, know, you don't. <laughs> right. What but is your typical? Was... What do you have to avoid? You have to avoid bread, right? Yeah, like I, anything, anything with wheat or or gluten. Uh, you know, my my son and I can't can't have. And then my wife's allergic to everything else, so she's allergic to soy and shellfish oh, wow. and uh, nuts. So you guys eat cardboard? Is that so? We eat, yeah. I, I mean, you don't want to eat. You know, we've <laughs> we've learned to adapt. So, we, you know, right. we figured out the things we can have and, and can do it. But it's, mm -hmm. you know, we're a nightmare at restaurants. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you know, we go to if we go to, and once you find one that kind of you don't get sick at, you, you tend to go back and you can tell the wait staff knows us because I, I know they're back there arguing over who has to wait on us. I know. Right. <laughs> and they really got to take care, right? Because if you eat something that's bad for you, you could, you know. Bad well, like my my wife, she doesn't. The cross contamination doesn't really bother her. She has to really have a, you know, a good exposure to something to to get sick. But now me, I mean, if they just use the same, you know, spatula or something, um, oh, it, it's just a tiny bit, I get sick. Close. Yeah, wow. I get sick pretty. Uh, pretty quick so and that's but it, it's rare i don't I, it doesn't happen to me very often it, when i was first diagnosed back before they had to label anything you know they didn't have to say it had weed in it that was pretty rough but now i mean as long as you yeah yeah, it, yeah you're protected i think there's a lot of uh, a lot of you people running around there. that's right and yeah. i think we've done it to ourselves i mean it, you know when i was growing up nobody had this stuff it's just mm -hmm. i think it's probably all the uh whatever we do to manipulate the food that is probably mm -hmm. caused mm -hmm. most of this stuff. Yeah. My wife is big on that stuff. She's, she watches every documentary about food and all that. Kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and tell I her just, to come, just come have a, a meal with us. We're like a documentary every time you go eat. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> 
Yeah. So, you know, you talk so about just, your, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, you talk about your kids. You know, I'm doing a, a show right now with my son and it's wonderful. I mean, I, you know, I'm on the Goldbergs playing my real son's father. So that's your son. That's my son. Yeah. I did not know that. that oh, know. that's a, we love the Goldbergs. Yeah. All of us love the Goldbergs. Yeah. I love the, uh, uh, you trying to steal Hanukkah. I love that. Yeah. Wasn't that great? Yeah. 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 So I get to work last week. I worked with my son next week. I'm going to work with my son. It's just wonderful. And I was able to hug my son on camera where I haven't been able to hug my son in real life for oh, like nine amazing. months because yeah. of now I was able to hug myself. We really hugged good on camera because yeah, we it, hadn't been able to. Oh, that's uh, yeah. I bet that played great. That's that's oh. that's a, a great story. And he's a um, he's a talented actor. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. He uh, started real young. He was in a movie called Monster House. That uh, yeah, um, it's an animated movie. Yeah, he played Chowder on Monster House. So he uh, he's been working all along, and uh, then this just came along, and it was. It's been great. I feel blessed, you know, working with my, just like you must feel when you're doing yeah. stuff with your son, you know? Yeah, it is. It's definitely a, definitely a blessing. Yeah. Well, I know, I, I knew that your, your brother acts, uh, did, mm -hmm. did your parents, were they actors as well? No, no, my brother was the first one. He started doing it and, uh, uh, I got interested because he was doing it. And, um, so we have, we never worked together, but we there was a chance that we were going to work together, but something happened that we couldn't do it. But uh, very supportive, very close with my brother Michael. Yeah, Academy Award nominee. Yeah, yeah, he's a great actor. That's I, yeah. I just assumed since you you both are such good uh, actors that uh, that maybe you you came from an acting family. Then. Yeah, no, no, Michael was the first one, and then I followed, and then my son is an actor. My daughter is an actress. She's done some television. You've passed it and, on. Um, yeah it's a family business yeah that's great that's great that's mm -hmm. that's uh that's pretty good well and i know that um so i i wanted to, to ask you because i know you do some coaching some acting coaching mm -hmm. yeah. yeah which which yeah that's pretty awesome how did that come about well i was studying with my uh mentor this gentleman named Roy london who was a great acting teacher and he was seeing that i was getting a lot of jobs so he said to me, you know, my students take acting class, but they're not working. And it seems like you know what you're doing. So he said, would you teach for me? So I taught audition technique for him. I had um, Sharon Stone in the class. I had a lot of good people in the class. And yes. uh, so that's how it started. And then I started my own school. And I've been teaching privately forever. And then I was teaching at the New York Film Academy, which is... Um, oh, wow this great school and it's, uh, they have one in New York, they have one out here. And then COVID just knocked everything out because we have a lot of foreign students and a lot yes. of foreign students can't even come over. So yeah. I stopped my personal class. I stopped teaching at the New York Film Academy. And uh, so we'll see what happens when COVID ends if I'll go back to teaching, you know. Well, yeah, I hope you get to. Love teaching. Yeah, how, how do you uh, manage that with your acting schedule well i cancel classes when it's the private class yeah. and when it's the new york film academy i tell them in advance this is when i'm working and then right. they get a substitute for me and uh so they accommodate me because they you know they know that i bring some cachet to yeah. school school you know that uh, working actor so you know you're studying with somebody that's out there doing it so you know yeah so that's a, yeah that's pretty great yeah. Well, and that's got to be kind of rewarding too. You're kind of paying it forward a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I love love doing it. Love seeing them. The spark that happens, and it keeps me fresh. You know, when yeah. I'm doing it. So, because you know the times between acting, sometimes you know work for a while. So I'm always out in there teaching and analyzing text and working on stuff. So, have you had college. any of your students go on to do some acting roles? Have you got to see them? Uh, uh Famke Jansen who is um i love fomka jansen yeah fomka was one of my students and uh the guy from picket fences constus costas mandalore oh i'm such a big picket fence uh fan that's an yeah. underrated show that's kind of a forgotten show and he was he was the deputy on there he was right good. right yeah and his brother he had a brother who was an actor that i worked with and um 
lots of who are the other people I work with as a, as a teacher that, that became Tom well known. Oh, I said Tom. Um, with my wife Patty. Hi, Patty. <laughs> That's Patty's hand. That's Patty's hand. <laughs> it's very nice hand. Oh wow! Yeah. What yeah, part? we're cross country. What's that? What part of West Virginia? Well, so we're right outside of Charleston in a little place called St. Albans. Ah, I was born in Portsmouth, Ohio, across the river. Really? That's, I went to school, uh, Marshall University down in Huntington, used to drive uh, across that bridge to Portsmouth all the time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's you're right there. Yeah. Ken, how have you never been to West Virginia when she was born right here? I know. I've never been to her hometown. <laughs> yeah, she keeps. We got to fix that. Just yeah, so 32, 32 years. 33 years. <laughs> She's going to yeah. keep you straight. Exactly. But you best <laughs> do it. <laughs> so, so here's my here's my question. So I'm not I'm not an actor, but we're we're producing this audio drama and it's been great. And I had, I had a, a small role in it where I had to just play myself, but it's op it's opposite of, um, Ed Asner. You uh -huh. know, so, which is pretty intimidating when you're not, you know, used to, to acting. So the scene calls for me to, to get a little bit emotional. I had a terrible time getting there, just terrible. But, but uh, Mr. Asner was, he was so good and so believable that he made me kind of emotional just listening to him. You know, I, that, yeah. that, so that worked for me. And, and the, but then I couldn't, I couldn't get out of it. I was sad the rest of the day, you know, I was kind of stuck. But then, so what, yeah. what happened was the record, his recording, great. No problems. My recording had an issue. So now I have to re-record my part, but I'm not going to have Ed to act off, off, you know, opposite of. And that's how I got to the emotional part. So that's my question. What, so what who, is, who is he to you? What, what was the relationship? Well, okay. So, so my day job is working in a, in a hospital. So he was, he was a patient that I was helping that day. Does that help at all? Uh, what was the problem? What was the what well? So, so the, the issue, problem? yeah. So the issue was, and this was, this was um, early on in. So it's based on a, a, a true story. It's early on with the the COVID situation when they closed down hospitals to visitors. So he came to my office looking for. He got he was lost and was looking for his wife's room. So I took him to see his wife. They've been married for 55 years and, you know, it, they had no children and, and it just kind of relied on each other. Well, he went to see his wife and then the next day they closed it so that he wasn't able to come back to see his wife and mm -hmm. she passed away in, wow. in the hospital. So, so that was, I got emotional just thinking about him not you know them not getting a chance to to be together so did you have to inform what did you have to inform him of the uh of what i happened? did yeah i did uh, i did well so i would just put it i would put it that you're talking to someone in your family about somebody in your family so that yes. when you're doing it you can really connect to uh, the sense of how it makes you feel to give them such bad news yeah. And so that's, it's not a stranger you're talking to. Yeah. That's that's exactly what my wife told me to do. So that's mm -hmm. I'll tell her. Yeah. I'll tell her you were right. She'll like yeah. that. Yeah, you gotta yeah. It's called substitution. That's what we do all the time. Yeah. We put in something that connects to us so that we don't have to work on the emotion. It's there because it's real. Yeah, it's real. So no, that, that makes perfect uh, yeah, perfect sense. I, I acting is such only two hundred and fifty dollars, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was going to say, just send me the bill. Acting right. is such a difficult profession. I, I think, you know, uh, people that, that don't act think it's, there's not much to it. You just show up and. Oh, no, you got to. And, and you know, the big thing so is you got to keep repeating it. You yeah. know, when, you know, if you're on camera, so you got to do it and then you got to repeat it. And then it's got to try to keep it fresh and keep it. Fresh. 
yeah. and keep it fresh. You know? So um, I have a story. I worked with an actor, well-known actor, and um, my mother in the scene was killed and my brother was responsible for doing it. This was on uh, oh, wow. a TV show. And yeah. when I had my side of it, when I was shooting, I was crying and I was really emotional. When we shot the guy that was playing my father on the show, he didn't get any place near where he needed to get. So when right. I finally saw the episode, they didn't take my great takes where I was crying and everything. They had to take something where it was much, much less because otherwise it wouldn't have matched what he did. So you see how much actors don't have control yeah. over what's used and their performance. You know? Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, I, I like to I like hearing the behind the scenes type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's such, a, did, such uh, a difficult job. When I did ER, I, I had um, Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Was, came into the to the office to the to my uh, to the hospital room and had to inform me that I had inoperable cancer. And in television, you shoot it 15 times. Right his angle to my angle, a double angle, you know, a master shot, a nurse coming, you know, all that. So you got to hear it all those times and you got to try to be as true as possible. Like you're hearing it for the first time. So working on that, cause I tell my students I have to keep trying to make it fresh and keep trying to make it like, who will I never see again in my life when I find this out? Right. So I kept throwing people in so that it would hit me the same way, you know? Yeah. So, Stop. Yeah, that's not easy. Stop. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Acting. that's that. that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm always just uh, just amazed with that because I mean, I just had that just small part playing myself, which you think mm -hmm. that would be just easy to do, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's just different. It's not. Right. Yeah, not for me. So, I don't think. What do you do actually? What do you? Um... Well, so I most of most of my life I've been in call centers um but i want to try something different so i went to work for for the local hospital system so normally i spend my days just talking with patients and fixing anything that they're having trouble with whatever it is right. but since since covid you know has hit th that interaction that face-to-face -face interaction I, I don't have as much of that so i'm just right. kind of right now i'm just whatever is is needing done at the hospital I'm pitching in, so I, I'm I'm a jack of all trades. There been a big outbreak in West Virginia. Well, you know, we initially know, you know, we we were pretty lucky. Um, recently, we we've, we've been getting hit pretty hard with it. Wow. You know, and just yeah, we we've struggled with it, especially you know just uh, within the hospitals. You know, a lot of the the employees and stuff kind of going through it. Thankfully, yeah. we haven't had too many severe cases, but you still have to the quarantine it takes them out of the you know the employment pool so it's just right. you got a lot of short staff and it's just you know it's it's difficult it's difficult right. yeah right. hoping this stuff uh, ends soon but i think we're in for uh, for a little bit longer i think it's gonna be a while yeah yeah yep. yeah we were talking before we got on air about you know how you're doing uh, auditions now kind of remotely mm -hmm. you know i just i just learned what a uh, what a side was so you you know, if they send you a side that that's uh, yeah that's it yeah that's i had I no idea on tape for. yeah yeah and then so you my wife reads it the back. my wife it's on the side i have a light that i bought it's called a ring light and then i have a backdrop that is neutral and yeah. i used my phone as a camera Put yeah, it into this kind of mechanism, and we shoot our auditions. That's the way we should, we do self tapes now. Yeah, that's pretty. You're pretty high tech. Yeah, I I, I got myself a ring light. That made a big difference with mm. uh, with yeah. the podcasting. That uh, that lighting is uh, not easy either. That's uh, tricky. Sure, exactly. And we never had, used to have to worry about. It. You know, we got people that. <laughs> so when I worked on the Goldbergs uh, last week. Uh, you got to wear a face shield. You got to have a face shield in front of you, and the makeup people go under the. So I have a face shield blocking them from my breathing. Right. They come under the face shield to put my makeup on. 
<laughs> and I have to wear a mask the whole time until I'm shooting the scene. Then I take the mask off and then the interact, the actors interact. But I got yeah. three COVID tests. I got to go tomorrow for another COVID test because I'm working the following week. So they're very careful. I mean, you well, got to be. That's good. You have you know? to be. Yeah. I mean, if somebody gets sick, they have to shut down a production. It's a lot of money. Well, sure. Scene. Yeah. I, I love the way the uh, the Goldbergs, they're, they always connect it to the, you know, the, the true story. You know, mm -hmm. so you, at the end of it, they kind of give you a glimpse of the, the real people. And mm -hmm. I, I like all the callbacks. You know, I love the fact that your son works on that. That's, that's pretty neat. Oh, it was unbelievable. The fact that, you know, he got, he started out as a small co-star, then yeah. he was a guest star, and then he kept bringing them back and bringing them back. And then he had this thing with, uh, you know, Haley Arantia, the, the girl yeah. on the show, and they became boyfriend. And then it just became big and big and big. So wonderful, wonderful thing for my son. Well, did they, did they call you and say, hey, we want you to do this role, or did you have to act? Well, they asked audition? Sammy first. They yeah. said to Sam, my son, are you okay? Because we're thinking about casting your dad to play your dad. Are you okay with your dad? Because, you know, maybe they didn't know whether we have a great relationship or not. Right, yeah. So they asked him and he said, please, yes, yes, yes. And that's how it worked. But Sammy is, you know, this social media monster. So he's always filming me. So he would film me a million times at Chinese restaurants ordering and, you know, doing all of that. And he sent them all of those and they all follow him on the show. So it was like a no brainer for them to just say, okay, play your, play your son's father on the show. That's you know? great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was, yeah, and it just gets, keeps getting better and better. Yeah, so, that's terrific. You've yeah. done some, so many different roles and so many different genres. Is there anything left that you would like to do? Um, I don't know, maybe a good, good, good horror film. When I've been in horror films, it was in Exorcist 3 with George right. C. Scott, but I've never been the monster. I mean, I was the yeah. monster in Arsenic and Old Lace. Gary Marshall directed it in the theater in, in uh, Burbank. Um, oh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think I'd like to be uh, like to be a monster, I'd like to be a killer. That would be great. That'd be good. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that's what you need. Yeah, because, you know, I have kind of like this they tell me a sweet face and you know you would never expect me that's right you know, never so know. i actually played um a predator on uh, a show called the commish oh and i love the commish yeah you remember that show remember so i was in a bank one michael time. uh Chickless. exactly so i was yeah. in a bank and a woman smashed me on the back and i said what do you what what and she said, you're a child molester. I said, ma'am, that was on the show. I don't <laughs> not. But, you know, I mean, they get so caught up in that, you know. You must have done a good so, job. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be known to be a child molester, but, you know, I'll take, I'll take the paycheck. So, you know, that was a fun show. We shot that up in Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. I think, so, I think that you would make a good vampire on like a, a remaking of monster squad well, that's, I love it. there you go yeah. see I, there you go i've i've got our project now we just gotta fund it i think Slightly that'd be enough. hilarious yeah that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> or you could do maybe you could do the uh uh the the uh, head vampire role in a remake of lost boys that'd be a good one mm, yeah I I just, I well the lost one. boys grown up yes yeah. I mean, that's the old men now. <laughs> the, the, lost, the lost old guys. Right. We can make that work. We can make that work. I, I, I think this is, once once this interview gets out there, expect the phone to ring. <laughs> no holding me yeah, back. Hey, we never thought of the vampire. That's... There you go. There you go. <laughs> so this background that you have here, so that's Arnold and you got Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arnold, when I worked with him on Running Man, was a practical joker so really? yeah so arnold i had a scene where i had to come through the door and arnold smashed the door shut so the uh director was paul michael glazer the actor and yeah. um, and he said action action 
I couldn't get the door open and Arnold's laughing like crazy and blowing smoke in my face from a cigar that he's smoking. And, you know, they just, uh, Ken can't open the door. <laughs> and, you know, it's, uh, and he would do that all the time. But as oh I God. told people, I have never been next to someone that seemed like a different species. His thighs were like this big. Oh, yeah. His were this big, you know, and it was like standing next to him, you feel like, okay, he's a man, and I don't know what I am because <laughs> there's difference. It's amazing. Amazing. Well, yeah, and back then, I mean, I was full Arnold. I mean, he was right in his prime back then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one of my students was Lou Ferrigno. Wonderful guy. Remember Lou oh, Ferrigno? Oh, yeah, I've met Lou. Yeah, yeah, great guy. He's a, he's great, a great guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, really sweet. We we got uh, part of what we do is we we cover uh, conventions as press, and we got to, uh -huh. to talk to him for a little bit uh, at, at uh, one of the conventions, which was which. But he's a big guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, him and all way back there was that documentary about pumping iron. Yep, with him and, and Lou with his father. Yeah, I don't know if you remember it. Yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the, the movie if you're into uh, bodybuilding. Is uh, pumping iron. Yeah, exactly. It's back yeah. when they were running around barefoot and doing mm -hmm. all the uh, crazy feats of strength and all that. That movie's uh, pretty nuts. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and it is that uh, that type of dedication to the to weightlifting and just uh, like that's, that's yeah. hard to imagine. You know, I've worked with actors when um, I did a movie called Undis 2 in um, Bulgaria and yeah. Michael Jai White, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he, you know, uh, when you yeah. work with these action people, they are in the gym like two hours before your call at six in the morning, they're in there working out and pumping on and then coming on the set and doing their thing. But it's always, you know, the they got a great shape. Um, luckily, as a character guy, as a pudgy character guy, I haven't had to worry about that. So when I did get into great shape, they still didn't see me as the guy that, you know, with people. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Nobody's called and said, hey, we need you to work with a trainer to get ready for No, uh, not me. That's not, they don't call me for that. Doctors, <laughs> lawyers, I'm right there. Yeah, I was, I've seen you as a lot of different doctors some lawyers mm -hmm. yeah but you're good at them you do a good job thank with it. You. yeah thank you, thank you. Yeah. well sir well, thank yeah, you so you. much this has been great oh, absolutely. oh yeah, it's been wonderful yeah i've uh i've always I, i've been such a fan of yours for well most of my life i mean happy days was mid-70s so that's uh yeah that's this this was a that was buckle the first one. for me yeah enjoyed that and i learned something i got to learn that you're uh working with your son on goldberg's and i've been you know we watch that show it's uh yeah now you can realize that you with a different little different little attitude yeah it's kind of neat it, it, it will it, it'll make you make me uh kind of view those scenes a little differently yeah actually the goldberg premieres tonight um on a spoof of airplane it's on uh Gosh, yeah, we got to watch that. Yeah, we've got it on the, uh, the we got the DVR set, so it just takes mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when they're new. So that's and, and and it's great that it's coming back. It's been a while since we've had some uh, new episodes. From yeah, it's the first. Uh, yeah, exactly. They just started shooting. I think we just finished the sixth episode, and they're doing the seventh, and then I'm in the eighth episode. So yeah. Right. We'll be watching it because I know there's. Is that the the hug scene? Do we get the hug scene in the? Eight yeah, episode? that's in the uh, sixth episode. Sixth episode. Okay. Yeah, we'll be watching that. for that. Yep. Well, so before you go, sir, um, you know where can our listeners or viewers, uh, where can they find you? Do you do you have a, a social media presence? Uh, um. Do I have social media presence? <laughs> I don't think I do. <laughs> hey, I had to do the same thing until we started this podcast. I didn't have one either. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have a social media presence. I mean, I'm on Facebook, am I? Aren't I? Uh, yeah, but you don't want me to. No, know. I want you to. It's just I have no social media presence. Yeah, Nowhere. Right. He would be well. 
don't know how much he needs you no. to run his social presence on the yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't send you a message on Facebook. You will not answer. Exactly. You got it. <laughs> Michael, it's been a pleasure. Yes, sir. It definitely has. Is there anything that anything else you have upcoming that we can keep an eye out for? Yeah, there's a there's a, a show that I did that is on Amazon Prime called Gravesend. Four episodes. I play a well, I play a Hasidic. Jew who is a, who is a um, nasty guy. I slap people around. I yes. actually get people killed. I don't do the, the shooting, but it's four episodes and um, Paul Ben is in it. Leo Rossi is in it. A couple of good oh, yeah. people. And uh, we're going to go back and shoot some more episodes soon. And so that's a good one. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, any mm -hmm. idea when that one's coming out? Well, it's on right now on Amazon. Oh, it's on Prime. now. Okay, great. Yeah, you can yeah. Check on that yeah I'll check that one out. I, I, yeah, we're always looking four for Four episodes of that. And uh, that's about it. I just finished doing a play called Isn't It Romantic, which was on Saturday night. It was a play reading, and it was on um, playbill.com. So it was oh. all streaming. So that was fun. Yeah, that's awesome, too. I, yeah, we yeah. love uh, love the, the theater. So that's, yeah. that's great. That's all it. right, sir. Well, thank you all so right, much. Michael. You'll have, to, uh, you'll have to come back at some point when uh, when Brett's back on so he get a chance to talk to you. You got it. Love to meet him. Yes, sir. All, All right. right. Well, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, sir. You got it. Take care. Bye. You too. Sir. <laughs> so that was the uh, the terrific, uh, talented Ken Lerner. That that was uh, that was fun. What a, what a great guy and such a such a terrific actor. And uh, we'll definitely be watching him later tonight uh, on the Goldberg. So make sure you do the same. Um, that was fun. I, I really enjoyed that. He's uh, he's been a uh, uh, an actor I've admired for uh, for a long time, and I, I love I, I tend to to really uh, love the the character actors because you see them in so many different uh, roles, and it's just fun. I think uh, uh, seeing them pop up in, in in different shows. I've always enjoyed that. Thank you very much for uh, for listening. Um, you know, we know there's a lot of options out there for you that you don't have to choose us, but uh, we appreciate uh, when you do. So, so I hope you'll keep coming back. We're, we're so excited that we're getting, you know, so many uh, uh, terrific actors and musicians and, and uh, uh, just talented people on the show. So, so thank you for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, please check us out on our website, MeisterCon.com. You can find us on, on Facebook under MeisterCon. Lots of fun stuff on there, so please check that out. Um, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash MeisterCon. If you uh, want to help out the podcast, if uh, you'd like to make a donation, we'd appreciate that. We are in the process of building our podcasting studio. We've bought the building. You know, We're just uh, working on renovating the inside, so we can definitely use, uh, use your help. So if you're so inclined, we'll give you some early access, um, you know, some bonus material. Maybe we'll even bring you on the podcast. You never know. So we appreciate uh, the help if you're so inclined. Um, okay, I guess that's it for this time. And we will see you again real soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>